All right, so what we're gonna need for this is PVC primer and PVC cement. A bicycle tube of some sort, the size does not matter. All we need is the stem. We need some form of rubber cement or epoxy, either will do. Two end caps, two adapters, one ball valve, two elbows, and one T joint. All of them in one, four, one and one quarter inch diameter and a five foot section of one and one fourth inch piece of PVC pipe. And it's out of view because it won't fit on my workbench. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our five foot piece of PVC pipe and we're going to divide it into four equal sections of 15 inches a piece. You will more than likely have a little extra or a little less left over because they don't cut these things to exact proportions, but that's fine. This isn't going to be an exact build. I'm just kind of winging this thing. Yeah. So, got our PVC cut into four separate sections. When you're cutting, you, me personally, I used just handheld hacksaw. Works great. When you get done making your cuts, me, I like to sand the edges down where I cut to get rid of all the excess plastic. Um, you don't really have to worry about making the cuts exactly straight as long as they're good enough to fit together. So what I like to do is go ahead and fit everything together, dry fit everything before I start gluing up because we're almost ready to start gluing things up. But I like to dry fit just to make sure things are going the way I want it to because I have a bad habit about screwing things up. So that's what our cannon is going to look like when we're finished. You got your pressure tanks here. All these three are pretty much one pressure tank. We all feed to this ball valve. Feed to the ball valve. You turn the ball valve, all pressure you build up in here, you release to the barrel here. Now for the next step you're going to need your inner tube tire and your end cap. This thing. I forgot what it was called. Your rubber cement and a drill. So, after some work, I got the hole drilled into our end cap. And I did that by taking my drill bit, which was not big enough, putting it in here from the inside, and drilling and rotating like that until I finally worked it into the right size I needed. Not a very safe way to do things, I'll have to admit, but hey, it worked and I got it done. And I took my stem and I cut it to look like this. Now when you cut it, you wanna make sure you're not cutting this round piece here. I don't know if you can really see it. But when you're looking at the inner tube, there'll be a darker ring around the stem. You don't want to cut that because that's where... Yeah, you, you just don't want to cut that. It'll leak. And not work out well. So... When you fit it in, you should fit in there like that. There's a ring on the inside of your PVC pipe. You don't want it to go past that because that's where piece of pipe's going to fit into and that's what's gonna when you put your PVC pipe in there it's gonna stop at that ring on the inside and if the rubber's overlapping it it might screw something up. Maybe. I don't know if we'll find out. So There's a hole right there in the rubber piece. You don't want to get rubber cement in that either. All right, now for the next bit, we're going to do glue ups. When you do glue ups, you want to make sure you're in a well ventilated area. You don't smoke while doing this or have any open flames because this is extremely flammable. I once used it to set off a potato gun, and it had more power than hairspray. I tell you that much. So. First thing you're going to do is you're going to take a purple primer here, 
It's very, very strong smelling. And me, I'm gonna build it in sections. I forgot to say that. Start off with the T-joint and build the pressure chamber and work my way down from there. Do it from bottom to top. That way I don't get confused and glue the wrong thing to the wrong piece and, well, screw everything up. So, you got your purple primer and your PVC cement. I always want to start off with the purple primer. Make sure the joints are clean and it's a better seal so you have less leaking. And when you put it in, you want to put it in and twist at least a quarter turn. And then hold it. That way it spreads glue around on the inside and makes a tighter joint and less likely to have weak stuff going. You want to hold it for a good 30 to 45 seconds because sometimes the glue has a science and pressure it tries to push it back out. Now that's done, we can move on to the next piece, which is joining our adapters to our ball valve. Now, I'm only going to put glue on one side of this, because with this design and these adapters, if you don't glue the barrel to the ball joint, you can actually make the barrels interchangeable to where you can build new barrels to do different things with if you wanted to. Now that that's epoxied in there, the rubber cement wasn't working the way I wanted it to. When the glue's done dry, we'll have our air can. 